Stokes flashes it away through the covers for four, and England have won the match. Hello and welcome to the Analyst Inside Cricket and our look back at the fourth day's play in the first Liverpool Victoria insurance test. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Between England and New Zealand from Lords, of course, the third day completely washed out. So very little chance of a, a decisive result, I suppose, with just one day left and England 165 behind, New Zealand two down in their second innings. And actually, Simon, um, we didn't do a podcast yesterday, in, inevitably. Um, must have been quite a boring day for you, actually. And, and oddly, a, a whole day washed out, which is pretty, much, pretty rare, isn't it now? Yeah, well, you think about the Lord's drainage and yeah, everyone says, oh, yeah, as soon as it stops raining, we better get underway fairly soon. Drainage is good at Lord's, but of course it, it never stopped raining, uh, even after they caught it off. Well, it did stop after they caught it off, but then it started raining again. So I think the umpires made the right decision. It's a really frustrating day because the match... I mean, it would be fascinating if, the, you know, if this were three days in with still two days to go, then it, a, New Zealand would have a great chance of, of winning the match. But there'd still be so much intriguing cricket still to come. But unfortunately, the, the players have been and the spectators as well have been denied by the rain on the third day. It, it does happen from time to time. We've seen uh, test matches at Lords affected by the weather in, in recent years, the Australia Ashes test match and the India a test match before that they both had days knocked out so it's actually not that unusual you think of London being sort of drier and warmer I think it, it probably is generally but unfortunately put some stumps in the ground and down comes the rain and actually the forecast of tomorrow suggests just a suggestion mm. there might be one or two showers around on on the final day but I mean it was a really interesting day today and a, a, a triumph for Rory Burns in the way it was a triumph for Devon Conway on the first two days, I mean, he dragged himself through Burns. I mean, he did have some luck, uh, Yoz. Uh, I mm. mean, it was it was mm. not a, by no means an unblemished hundred. I mean, Conway, it was really. I mean, it was yeah. an unblemished double hundred. But yeah. for Burns, he needed some help from the umpires, and he needed some help from the New Zealand fielders as well. Tactical. And and he needed some help from the physio, didn't he? Because <laughs> he had two at least two clangs yeah. on the head, yeah. and uh, had to change his helmet. And that's what I. I worry about with him a bit, and I know you shouldn't uh, judge everyone on how they're going to go in Australia, but I do worry about that because he's a compulsive hooker and the Aussies have bounced him out in the Ashes series of 2019 a couple of times. I just think he, he, he doesn't play that shot very well and he gets clanked on the head really quite too often for, a, for an opening batsman. But credit to him, you know, he, he absolutely grafted, you know, grounded out, didn't give it away. Uh, picked up his runs, was quite fluent actually towards the end. And I mean, in England were very thankful for him too, because if he hadn't made that hundred, they would be following on, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, at every chance that they would have been in a position to to follow on on New Zealand to enforce the follow on. I mean, it's, it's funny, is that I mean, the game is, it's a game of such fine margins. We know that, I mean, international sport generally is, you know, in all sorts of sports, those fine margins. But three times he was hit on the pad. Three times New Zealand went up for the LBW shout and three times it was umpire's call. So if he'd been given out, he would have been mm. on his way. You know, he wouldn't have been able to overturn it. And, and a couple of those were earlier in his innings. One certainly was very early in his innings that, that he got away with. Um, but yeah, it's all it's my new, it's just these millimetres, isn't yeah. it? It's millimetres. Yeah. And, you know, if the umpire's call goes your way, i.e. I, the umpire's decision goes your way and the, the technology backs it up, I mean, it's it's your lucky day, which I suppose it was today. But you feel for a guy like that that he deserves the bits of luck because he he gets so stuck in. Yeah, um, and I, but I mean, it's also a really bad miss stumping by B.J. Watling mm. on seventy-seven. I mean, though you you as a, any self-respecting wicketkeeper, uh, not just Test level, but county level, and even you know second level level, and even <laughs> you know good league cricket level, you'd expect to take that stumping. And 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 B.J. Watling, I mean, was furious with himself. And Burns was also so you know dropped in the eighties as well at, at second slip, a catch that that really should have been taken. Uh, it was a it was a tough old innings from Burns. Yeah, you have and give him tremendous credit for, for battling it out. And you know, there were a few England players today that you know swished and, and nicked mm, and mm. Uh, you know and, and didn't show a great deal of solidity, but but Burns did. 
Uh, he, he, yeah. he was dropped in the winter, of course. He had, he had a bit to prove. And I mean, what you, you mentioned his fluency in the latter part of his innings, it, it actually just shows the shots he's got and the shots he's capable of playing. You know, he really did rein himself in, but he, he got into the 90s. And then he saw Jimmy Anderson coming in. He realized, you know, oh, well, hold on. I, you know, Jimmy can hold up an end as he did. But if I don't, you know, be a bit, bit more proactive here, then I'm going to perhaps miss out on 100. And it, it really opened the way for me. He played several sparking strokes. He really did. It was a, yeah, it was a, it was a sort of magnificent sort of latter part of his innings and a really, really gritty hundred, which you know inevitably will give him a great deal of, of confidence and you know maintain his his place in the side uh, for the foreseeable future as well because he you know he was dropped in the winter. So I mean, the good thing for him is that he, of course he was in good form going into the test match. He has made runs for Surrey and you know that always always helps. It helps the confidence, doesn't it, going into a game. But you know, one of those LBWs have gone against him, especially the early one, then you know we, we wouldn't be sitting mm. here talking about yeah. Rory Burns at all now. Wouldn't no, we? And, and well, I mean we would be probably talking about uh, England uh, up against it. Um, let's have a quick look at the the who's winning graphic for today, um, just to see what the state of, of the game is. If you're watching this on video, obviously you'll be able to see this, um, but I'll describe it anyway. Um, so we, we've had a, a day or two, obviously with the with the loss of the, the third day, um, there was probably less chance. The draw was always going to be uh, edging towards the, the most likely outcome, and we've seen that really develop today. Uh, there was a there was just a little hint. For England, uh, around about the start of play, when um, they no, sorry, that's not right, is it? Um, there was there was a hint of uh, opportunity for New Zealand actually around about the start of play today, when they took Root's wicket early on, the first ball of the, of the day, of course, and then some fairly loose batting uh, by uh, Dan Lawrence, Ollie Pope, really, and obviously James Bracey, sadly gave the New Zealanders a sniff of a chance of, of forcing victory. If they could uh, in make England follow on, that, that was at about uh, mid, mid-morning. And they were up to 28% chance of, of victory. England, uh, 3% chance of victory at that point. But really, ever since then, with the Burns dedication and also actually some good batting from Molly Robinson, uh, the New Zealand's hopes of, of victory have really much declined. And the draw is now looking at like 90% uh, a possibility so uh, all is uh, probably in vain for, for both teams to get a, a positive outcome out of it I mean just talking about the the England batting uh, those sort of rather rather sad dismissals I mean does alarm me slightly when you see Dan Lawrence you know having a massive drive at about his second or third ball and um, the way he tried to play it as well I've got a, a bat here and instead of going with the swing and sort of opening the face, he has a, a tendency to turn the bat, turn the blade over uh, like a top spin. And I know a lot of modern players like to play that sort of top spin off drive, but if the ball is swinging away, it gets you into trouble, as it did to Zach Crawley as well. So a loose drive from him. And James Bracey looked um, all at sea, really. A uh, good bit of bowling by Tim Southey, but uh, he did leave a gate, you know, as, as wide as a barn door in the end, which the ball snaked through for a rather unfortunate duck for for Bracey on his test debut and I I, I I just actually when I look at batsmen getting out like that I then compare it with some of the New Zealand batsmen and the the tightness of their technique uh, Tom Latham uh, obviously uh, Devon Conway Henry Nichols you know they play Kane Williams and they play the ball so close to their body they don't get drawn into those big expansive drives they absolutely sell their wicket dearly there's a an economy of movement an efficiency of movement about the way they defend I was looking at uh, Henry Nichols's uh, stats today about his innings and he uh, he, he batted um, something like 42 balls before he got into double figures and his he hit his first boundary on his 75th ball and he just totally dedicated himself to supporting Conway in that New Zealand first innings. And that is the, the, the fundamental root of why New Zealand are so good, because they bat in partnerships, they don't take risks, they defend really close to their body. And I had quite an interesting conversation with, uh, on the wet day, the third day, I was in the box uh, in the grandstand with Mike Brearley, actually, and also um, the, <laughs> funnily enough, the New Zealand ambassador, 
who's a man called Bede Corrie, Bede Corrie. And we were talking about, well, how is it that New Zealand are always punched so, so much above their, their weight? And he was going, well, it's partly the sort of undog thing that they've a population of 5 million, which is pretty much the lowest of any test playing country. So they always sort of rise to the underdog status. But also we, we've mentioned batsmen like Martin Crowe. Martin Crowe was the, the prince of New Zealand batting until Kane Williamson came on and had the, the best record, had the most test hundreds and so on by a Kiwi. And I mean, he just had a, a fantastic, simple method, played the ball right under his nose. I, I often tell the story about bowling to Martin Crowe, even your best ball, he just stunned it two yards and, and snuck a single because he, he was able to play the ball so late that the ball went nowhere and he could get a single off your best ball. And it's, it's exasperating. And obviously he had so many um, beautiful shots as well. But I think he's laid a legacy for th th this sort of economy of movement that uh, the New Zealand batsmen show and a dedication to the crease and an orthodox defence, which Devon Conway also showed, even though he's not a, a Kiwi by birth. He's kind of, you know, almost... Um, seem to have gained by almost osmosis the methods that they use. And I, I think there's a great lesson there to be learnt for those young England batsmen by the way that the Kiwis bat. So just a bit flirty as far as England are concerned in that, in that middle order, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, and, and top order as well. Crawley uh, giving it away, Lawrence giving it away, uh, Bracey being undone by... I mean, it was essentially a straight ball, wasn't it? I mean, that was a well, it swung a bit. Through. It was from round the a wicket. Bit. Swung in yeah, it was a little quite bit, nicely but... bowled. Well, I mean, what yeah. he did, Southie, was he, he went round the wicket and he just shaped a couple away from the left-hander first, mm. like that, sort of using the slope, and then he swung one in against the slope through the gate. So it was clever bowling, but the gate was very large. Yeah. I mean, you know, bowlers at international level are allowed to swing a couple away and then duck yeah. them back in. I mean, you know, anyway, it's... it's so the best match. batting, apart from uh, Rory Burns, was was Ollie Robinson today. Who, well, he, you know, he, I thought he showed good, simple method, actually, and um, did extremely well. What a, what a game he's had with excellent bowling in the second innings, two wickets, got Conway out, finally, bowled uh, off the inside edge and then got Williamson as well. So it's been quite a game for him on the field. Yeah, well, and off it as well. 140 for six he came in at, and he thought the New Zealand got a great chance they could enforce the follow-on, but that, that 50 partnership with Burns snuffed that out and, and yeah, gave Burns um, some longevity as well at the other end and in, in increased England's confidence, and they got, got up to a decent, you know, relatively decent score in the end and, and you know, restricted New Zealand's lead. Now, Ollie Robinson, uh, again, I mean, bowled really well. He's had, a, he's had an excellent match. As you say, he's taken six wickets, and he's made 42. He's got the chance to, to, to add to that on the final day with, with ball. Who knows? Possibly with bat, although England would be hoping he doesn't get to bat on the final day. That would suggest that New Zealand have, have made inroads into England's batting again. What do they do with Ollie Robinson now? I mean, that, that, that's, that's the question. Is, is he going to be suspended for the next test match? Is he going to be taken out of the squad? Uh, you would think that there was going to be some sort of uh, sanction against him and you could argue as well that if the ECB I mean this is quite a this is quite a sort of strong view really if the ECB uh, are serious about uh, you know racism and 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 sexism and that they could have taken him out of this game and it, I'm sure I, I understand it you know those there were some discussions behind the scene about the possibility of of doing that, take, taking him out of the game and sending out a really strong message because it, it would have done wouldn't it I mean it would have been unprecedented and it'd been a heck of a decision to make. And people say, well, you know, that would have penalised the other 10 players. But is the, is the stand that the ECB are trying to take, and they did take a stand at the start of the game, the players, they all, you know, they all lined up in a show of unity at the start of the match. Is, is that more important than winning? And, uh, and so that, that is a stand they could have taken. At, during the game, they could have taken Ollie Robinson out of the match. And, you know, it, it's, it would be a tough decision. And, you, can, you know, people can argue, well, it was, it was nine years ago, eight, nine well, years ago. Well, I would ago. argue that. Yeah, yeah. well, OK. And, that's, and that's, I, I perfectly understand that. He was 18 or 19 at the time. Uh, you're allowed to vote at 18. You can get married at 18. You can drive at 18. You, you, know, you, you, are, you know, you are responsible for your actions. And, you know, I mean, this is taking it a bit further. But, you know, if you... If you, I'm not, I'm not saying you committed a crime, but if you did commit a crime at 18 and you were found out at 27, you would still be punished for that crime. But what, what the point I'm making is that you are, you know, you are responsible 
uh, for your actions. And it, it, is, it, it is hugely embarrassing for the ECB that they didn't, uh, you know, go back into his so social media and, and, and have, have a look back because, you know, there, there is that, you know, re responsibility and they talk, they talk about equality and diversity and, and all those sorts of things. And yet you have a situation here where, you know, it's hugely embarrassing. And those, you know, those tweets are quite shameful, actually. They, they really are. And he, when he, he put them out there, and he, you know, stood up after the first day and apologized for them. So anyway, so that's one thing they could have done. If they, you know, that would have been a really tough stance, and uh, it would have really sent a message to all young players that you know we are serious about this. And it would, have, it, it really would have. I mean, it would have been a tough stance, but it, what a what a line in the sand it, it it would have drawn. Anyway, they they didn't do that. It's something they could have done. What do they do now? He, he clearly, well, sir, now I wouldn't hold, suspend hold on, him. Hold on, clearly, clearly he does on, you know, his performance in this match. He deserves to have another test match. Mm. You know, he's he's, he's played he's played superbly. I'm not. I, I wouldn't say. I, I know, you know. I've actually never spoken to him. I'm just going on what I've you know what I've seen on on Twitter, and you know what what's happened in this game. But I'm, what, I'm the just, keyboard warriors. You mean you're being influenced by keyboard warriors? No, I'm, not, I'm not being influenced by anybody. I'm just I'm just saying what I've read. No, I'm just saying what I've read from his, his, those tweets that he put out all mm, you know, those, okay. those years ago. That's what I'm saying. They are shameful. Mm. And so um, what what the ECB do? They I don't think they. I mean, their stand is a is supposedly a, a tough one. You know, zero tolerance is what they talk about. So what do they do? I, I can't, I mean, I can't see how he plays at Edgbaston, even though, even though with his on-field performances, he deserves to play at Edgbaston. So they've got a big, they've got a big decision to make. Yeah. And, and I, I think that they can't win either way, but if it was me, I would say I'd, I'd perhaps fine him something and, uh, and make a, make a clear statement that, you know, he's being fined for this. Does well, that make I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's, but, but I don't see why he should be penalised uh, in a, in a such a severe way by missing a test match, which will be a blot on your career to be suspended for a, a test match for something like that. And for something he did when he was, uh, you know, nine years ago when, you know, I, I, look, I'm not in any way condoning what he wrote or, or tweeted or whatever, but things have changed. And, you know, these sort of issues have become much bigger and social media has become much more inflammatory and people are investigating it more. And, you know, people delve into what you wrote and deleted eight or nine years ago. And I think it's almost condoning the, the rather sort of scurrilous nature of journalism these days, which is to try and dig up all sorts of, you know, nasty stuff about people when they're suddenly in the public light. Why couldn't someone have dug that up before he was a test match? player and well, you know maybe he could have been banned from a county game or something it seems very severe to to suffer the, the suspension from a, a test match for something that he did so long ago when attitudes to things like this weren't quite as um as harsh or um you know kind of um punish what they weren't sort of punishable offenses as much then as they are now well, perhaps they should have been. Perhaps they shouldn't be. It should have been then, and we I mean, wouldn't be in this yeah, situation but... we are in now, where sure. you know where we have a situation where you know th th those those tweets, and he acknowledged that he was the one that stood up and apologised after that first day's play. He he he, you know, he he admitted it himself, and it, you know, he put those into the public domain, and he, you know he was over the age of eighteen at the time. I mean, I do I, I take your point that um, you know they people change, and I I, to I totally accept that. Um, but the ECB have also talked about a zero tolerance policy. So they, they have got a, they've got a decision to make about it, whether they, you know, they just say, oh, well, uh, you know, it was nine years ago and will there be a bit of a sanction, but, you know, on, on you go, or whether they, they actually say, right, I'm, I'm sorry, we have, we, have to, we have to take a stand on this and someone will have, you know, will have to take the fall. And in this case, it is... It is Ollie Robinson. Yeah, I, I um, think I, I think the amount of publicity it's had already is enough of a warning to next generation to to, to make them realise they can't post stuff like that. And uh, you know, I don't think you need to ban someone to or suspend them or whatever to to make it clear that this kind of thing is not to be tolerated. I think it, it, they're just the kind of it, 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 apology he's already made and the embarrassment that's sort of surrounded him for two or three days is enough to make everybody realise that you can't do it. Yeah. Well, that is that is one point of view and other people have... But a, you don't a, agree with it. Different point. Um, 
Well, uh, what I think is this, is that if, you, if you're an organization, this is my point, is if you're an organization that says zero tolerance, what a, and you, you take the stand and say, I'm taking that person out of the game, what a message that sends to everybody, that you, that you really do, you are really backing up your words. That, that, I think that's the point I'm making. If you, if you talk about zero tolerance, that, that, is a, that is a tough stance. I agree, I tell you, it's a tough stance to take. Taking, it'd be unprecedented to take a player out of the game. And, you know, if, but if, if those are your words, then that, that is zero tolerance, isn't it? Taking a player out of the game. That, that would be zero tolerance. So anyway, and if you, if you think it's harsh, you could argue, yes, it is. And I, I accept this. It, it is a strong sanction. It, it would have been a, a strong sanction. Mm. But, um, well, anyway, they've got a decision to make, haven't they, from here. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, and it's not, it's not easy. And, you know, no. you, some, and sometimes you need the wisdom of Solomon, don't you, to, to sort these, these problems out. It, 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 is a really, it is a really difficult situation, arguments on both sides. And, you know, it, it's difficult to come to a, you know, you could argue it's difficult to come to a, a wise judgment on this. What, you know, what is the right course of action? And I, and I totally accept that. Um, but I just go back to my point. If you're talking about zero tolerance, then taking him out of the game would be, or would have been, zero tolerance but he's a he's a he's a he's a very good cricketer and he's, yeah. he's, had, a, he's had an excellent match and he bowled superbly tonight and he batted really well today and he bowled really well in the first innings and he's got an excellent county record and it's a county record that, that you know thrust him into the england side 280 odd wickets now yeah. first class wickets at you know it's 21 yeah, very good I mean, yeah. they are they are they are they are figures that say pick me mm. um, no, no one. He is, looks no a test is. cricketer. He just looks. Yeah, he I mean, I, I, you know, his batting isn't brilliant, but he's perfectly respectable eight or nine. And England could do with that, really. If you think the bowlers they've had recently, the fast bowlers, apart from Chris Wokes, no one can really bat that well. I mean, Mark Wood is disappointing today. I thought, you know, he keeps talking about wanting to be able to bat and and contribute. And I know he works hard on his batting as well. I've seen him, you know, practicing in the nets up in Ash Ashington when. We were filming our documentary a month ago, but he can't deliver in the match. And it's, it's a shame, really, because he obviously has ability, but there's this sort of mental blockage when you're a number nine. You know, you get to 20 and you think you're, you know, Kane Williamson and or Virat Kohli, and you start trying to play expansive shots and you get out. And, of course, in his case, he tried to play an expansive shot after three balls. It's just you don't have the mindset for it. And... Uh, I, I think that's something that bowlers are really hampered by. Um, but I think Robinson looks as if he has got the mindset to, to play in innings and, and build and, and, you know, accumulate and, and, and work out the, the different tempos and things of, of, that are required. And he's got enough shots. So, and he's tall actually as well, which I think helps uh, to sort of deal with aggressive fast bowlers or whatever. So yeah, a, a, a great debut and um, someone who I think will really give a bit of ballast with broads batting so in decline over the last few years it will give a bit of ballast to the lower order which is good yeah well yeah we'll, we'll obviously see what happens but we shouldn't um finish this uh, podcast yours without talking about and we, we've touched on him a little bit already tim southey i mean mm. magn magnificent bowling figures and you know tight as well six six wickets i mean he's over 300 wickets in his his test career i'm sure as a as a former pace bowler uh, yourself you you can really appreciate what what Southie's done over yeah. the last yeah no, actually minutes. what I love about him is he's uh, like the New Zealand batsman he's quite he's got quite a simple approach really and I, I can you know I can demonstrate with this ball here that you know his basic outswinger just sort of tilts the, the the seam slightly towards the slips and that swings nicely away from the right hander and then he just ch just changes his grip slightly and, and moves the seam a tiny bit away from its normal position. So his fingers are now on the, the leather rather than on the seam. And he bowls it down the same action and it doesn't swing. It, it just angles in. And it's called his three quarter ball because instead of the, uh, the, the fingers either side of the seam, the fingers are sort of on three quarters of the seam. So it, it doesn't swing and it just wobbles. The, the, the seam wobbles down. It looks like a cross seam delivery. It just wobbles down and goes straight on. And he's, he's been working on his in-swinger to the, to the right-hander as well, which he can now use to the left-hander. So he's, he's developed a few little extra tricks, but basically he runs up and bowls nice full-out swingers. He doesn't mind getting driven uh, occasionally and uh, he's trying to induce the edge all the time. He goes a little bit wider of the crease occasionally, 
to try and induce the drive. And it's just little subtle variations and a, a very rhythmical, quite flowing action as well. He's not quick, is he? He's 82, 83 miles an hour, but he just gets that lovely curving shape with the ball, seems to swing it pretty much all day and um, keeps going, you know, great stamina and, and just great optimism, actually, as a bowler. He's always smiling. He's not one of those grumpy fast bowlers. He's no. always looking positive. And, uh, yeah, fantastic performance, 300 wickets. And, of course, if, if they have Trent Bolt for the next test, uh, England's batting work will be even more cut out. Yeah, we're not, not sure what's happening with uh, Trent Bolt. Uh, he should have arrived in the country. He's here. He's know, here. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah, wandering yeah. around the outfield, isn't yeah. he? So, yeah. 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 So there we go. Well, whether he'll play or not, um, it remains to be seen whether he's had you know, enough bowling, whatever conditioning, um, mm. to be ready to play next. Well, I reckon they need Thursday. to play him in the next test mm. because then he's ready for the, the World Test Championship final. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that, actually, as, yeah. as I know you are, mm. just to see those two teams you know, battle it out for even potentially six days. I think you were saying on radio today. Well, well, well that's right. I was, I was, I had a. I mean, it wasn't the most thrilling uh, Friday night. Uh, my wife had a friend round. My daughter had a friend round. So there was me just on my own. Um, and so I thought what I would do is, is delve into the regulations of the World Test Championship and have a look at um, the stipulations regarding it. The you, the you know how day. to live, don't you? Well, I know. Spend I, a Friday uh, night re reading <laughs> the regulations of the World Test Championship final. Well, it was, it wasn't the only thing I did on Friday night, but it was one of them because I was slightly intrigued. I, what, you know, what, in what way do we get a sixth day? And I have to say, having read the regulations, I'm still not quite sure. I, I think because <laughs> they're not they're not well written. They really aren't very well written. Uh, they, they should be in a, a, for example, you know, in there just to, to, so that people can un understand it. Anyway, we will be kept up to date by the match referee as the match goes on, so we will we'll be able to communicate that. But it seems to me from reading and i may be completely wrong that it is possible say to have an hour and 15 minutes on the sixth day so we might all come back i, I, I think so anyway as long as they pay us for a full day's work i don't care <laughs> well i know you're going to be there as well so it's, it's possible to come back for an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and a half or an hour and five minutes i, I think that it has to be an hour that's the, that's the most we can well, sorry the least we can play on the final day but anyway if there's no rain then we won't have to worry about it and you know a draw's a draw um but if there's time significant time lost then that time it's not made up in the first five days will i think be carried over to the sixth day but we what we won't have is it, it seems to me unless it's loads of time lost we won't have a full sixth day there'll be you know a certain amount of time allocated uh, for, the, for the final day the sixth yeah. day of the match yeah. but it's not quite timeless test i mean we've had six that we have had six day test matches i mean i remember there's one i mean so going back in the day now there was definitely one in the 1972 ashes series which is when i started they first started watching cricket because that was a decider. So they had six days uh, for the Oval Test match between Eng England and Australia. And Australia you know, won the match on the final day and, and leveled the series. But England held the Ashes because they'd won in Australia the, the previous time. Of course, you go all, the, all those years back, you know, to timeless Test matches. Yeah, the 19, famous one, 1939. 1939. 10 day game England mm. needed about 40 to win but they had to call the game off because uh, they had to catch the boat home you know, yeah and you know I think they were chasing about 600 in the last chasing, innings as well yeah so I mean they were chasing a huge score to win it would have been you know, an incredible um, mm. feat if they if they got there it's funny yeah. isn't it back then they probably thought 40 to win or oh, that'll probably take about another hour and a half these days they'd have knocked it off in about three overs and everything <laughs> yeah everyone could have gone home no now, no yeah no I'm, I'm just going to give you one little bit of credit okay. um you predicted that Gloucestershire's county championship campaign might falter. Yeah. I see they've lost by an innings to Leicestershire. RIP Gloucester. Well, they're, yeah, they're struggling now, aren't they? I mean, I did say uh, about a couple of weeks ago, they'll have to play very badly to mess it up from here. And I think it's fair to say they have played very badly. They've lost, <laughs> they've lost two matches by an innings in their last two games. Sorry at the Oval and uh, against Leicestershire as well. Uh, well, you know, they perhaps they've been found out i don't know but um mm. they've still they've uh, they'll still be in it going into the last two games against uh hampshire and and middlesex but this is going to be a, a tall order it's really starting to concertina at the, at the at the top of that that group too we what we should just is look at the very quickly a word on the final day of, of at lords your um who's winning uh graph says yeah you know, clearly a draw uh, what 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 could change in that? Well, we've, we've, in theory, we've got ninety eight overs. In fact, we have. Got what what, what could change? Though. I mean, what could change is is if the ball does what it did tonight and they nick it instead of miss it, 
England could. I, I know this, you know, that the graphic says England had a 3% chance of victory, but mm. in a way, you know, if the ball d- d- really does something and f- there are a few edges and you go to hand and, you know, say England bowl New Zealand out for, I don't know, 150, they could chase 250 to win. Um, mm. Obviously, if, if New Zealand get bowled out for 150, that suggests the pitch is playing up and it certainly is a little bit. So chasing 250 will be tough, but... Yeah, you know, I think all results are still possible, actually. I think the graph is is almost a, a little bit of a, a, an illusion, but you know, I, it looks you know, odds on yeah. to be a draw, doesn't it? Yeah, you, yeah, you, you think a draw is, is, a, is a big banker there. But you know, it, 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 could, it could happen, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other side of it is New Zealand. New Zealand might get in, into a position sometime in the afternoon where they can declare and try to embarrass England in, say, you know, 50 overs or something like that, 53 overs, uh, mm-hmm. pro- probably a race against time. They've had a, if they had a couple of decent spinners, uh, then it, it might be different. We, we, we've said early in the game that um, th- this this pitch is probably has not got the spinners it deserves. I, I mean, the ball has turned, and, and I think it will turn tomorrow. And if it they be India spinners bowling on the final day, they they might well have been able to, or they might you know cause some problems. But mm. it's, it, it's it's going to be Mitchell Santner who mm. who is the you know the unlucky man on the stumping, uh, you yeah. know, Rory Burns, um, you know, missing out on a on a on a wicket. But you you'd think draw. Um, but not for one to trying. It's been an interesting test match, hard working test match. Quite a struggle for the batsmen actually. And Conway and Burns have been able to to triumph. But the bowlers have, you know, the bowlers have sort of really posed problems for the. It's batsmen. all to it's do not, with this. It's all to do with this. Yeah. That it's not beautiful belter, juice it? ball. No, it's not a no. It's not a belter. I think it's because it's dry. You know, the ball yeah. is yeah. is gripping and there's a little bit of uneven bounce. Now, just a quick date for your diary. Your uh, and my colleague, Vaughney. Mm. has agreed to come into the virtual cricket club next Wednesday to give us a few more opinions (laughs) and lots of other little revelations. So that is next Wednesday, uh, the, uh, what date is that? The 9th of June uh, at seven o'clock in the evening, Michael Vaughan live in the virtual cricket club. You can ask him direct questions on the screen, things you've always wanted to ask him. Uh, and he's going to be there for over an hour on Wednesday night in aid of the Virtual Cricket Club. And you can join us by going to worldsbestcricketclub.com. It's £6 a month to join, but we do have a live player on that stream every week. And also we post podcasts and things like that. So well worth it. If you sign up to worldsbestcricketclub.com, we'd love to see you because that is a really swelling community and lots of cricket chat on the WhatsApp group that we built around it and people are really sort of meeting new friends and getting kind of some really good insights into cricket on this whatsapp group as well so hopefully you can join us at the world's best cricket club and we'll be back to review the last day of this match at this time tomorrow so speak to you then dum, diddy, dum, diddy, dum. <laughs>